This video is going to be about the gearing you need for small wheel bikes specifically. You could use this information on any other bike, full size 28 inch, 24 inch uh, bikes as well. But this channel is primarily geared towards small wheels, so that's going to be the focus. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so. Check out the links below, check out the book. My book will tell you everything about how to max out a small wheel ride or even a not so small wheel ride if that's what you're interested in doing. What I'm showing you in the videos are more like garnish on the cake, more specialized information, more reviews and different angles. So I want to start out with the basic gearing that everybody knows. Obviously what people know is what's most popular especially in the US not so much in Europe is the external uh, derailleur system so you have a bunch of sprockets lined up and you have to have a derailleur to move the chain around them there are several problems for small wheel bikes because of these systems obviously the number one problem is that on a small wheel that that is only in the case of the birdie you are seeing here you have 18 inch wheels the Brompton is even smaller it has 16 and a quarter inch wheels the Moulton some others are the turn bikes they all they typically have 20 inch wheels but either way you just have a very small wheel and these derailleur systems were designed for much bigger wheels so the bottom of the derailleur is very close to the to the curb so there is i owned the birdie for over a decade and i was always nervous about hitting the curb with this thing interestingly enough i never had a problem and i've never heard of anybody else having such a problem and i think the main reason for that is that if you ride very close to the curb you are going to hit the curb with the pedal first before you could get to the derailleur the only way you could hit the derailleur independently is if you try to jump off of a curb in a kind of diagonal way which is a really risky thing to do and not a maneuver most people would be interested in doing but in any case I'm just putting you on note that the derailleur system it's kind of dicey on a small wheel bike because it is so exposed to harm by being so low and down to the ground now you can see how low it is on the other hand the advantage of it is if there is such a thing as, as an advantage it was developed really because it's a very lightweight system so when you watch the races you want you watch the Tour de France or something similar then they are all using derailleur systems in fact with electronic shifting to make shifting even more instantaneous and uh, so the light weight is partly the reason the other thing that is good for is that you can still put a smaller a narrower electric motor in there and in fact many many electric motors are designed to work with these kind of derailleur systems so you still have your external gears in the rear but you also have a motor next to it in fact that's what uh, the Brompton G-Line is giving you they have a motor in the back and they have a derailleur on the outside not my favorite setup but it's certainly something that is useful and the main reason I abandoned the birdie platform for my own needs was that I knew that I could only put a motor in the rear not in the front this kind of a front uh, front suspension system does not allow the front wheel to pull only to push back so it's not possible to put a motor in the front as I would have liked to do why did I want to put the motor in the front because the most powerful the widest gear range of any system is going to come from a hub gear so with a derailleur system you might be able to speed up on a good day with an average chain ring to maybe 22 24 miles an hour which is probably enough for most people but with electric support i wanted to be able to do at least 30 miles an hour which is simply not possible with this kind of a gearing and this is what brompton also offers to you you see the, the brompton derailleur their derailleur unlike the birdies is uh, custom designed in-house and there's a lot of aftermarket support as well but there is unique sizing everywhere what we are seeing here is actually a hybrid system because you have your four gears as an external derailleur system plus you have a small hub gear and i will look at that system later on but i just want to show you how molten does it 
Obviously, this is a very expensive, very sophisticated group set. This is a Campagnolo. This whole bike, this is the speed. It's close to $20,000. And the, just the, the group set is going to be over $1,000. Part of the reason is the excellent engineering. Look at how compact this is. It has a ton of gears and yet it is so compact. And Moulton has done this on several, even on their cheaper models, of using derailleur systems that are really very compact. So the fear about the steps and the curbs are diminished significantly. I think the best system to use for a small wheel setup is definitely the hub gear. If you have a Brompton, the only thing you can fit into the standard classic steel frame is going to be the Sturmy Archer, which is the bottom basement, whereas the Roloff is the top of the line. It comes in all kinds of colors. It looks beautiful. It's masterpiece engineering. It's the best uh, German mechanical engineering that you can think of. It also has about the widest range. Unfortunately, it does not fit the classic Brompton frame, the steel frames, not even the titanium ones. It should fit the G-line, but Brompton does not offer it as an option. So you would have to buy the G-line with the Shimano option take out the Shimano, sell it for a few bucks, and then cough up the money for uh, a roll of installation and install it yourself or hire a professional to do it. These hub gears cost at least $1,500 and that's the cheapest option. They are also quite complex to install. They have a dual cable because the cable is not pulling anything on the inside. It's turning a switch on the outside. It's a very clever design that puts minimal pressure on the cables. So your original installation is probably gonna last a lifetime. If you can't afford a roll off, but you want something better than the Sturmy Archer, then you can opt for a Shimano. And Shimano offers several options. Now I wanted to say a few words about these hybrid things. You have, this is something similar to what the Brompton has, but a much larger, much more sophisticated standard with um, set up with uh, a lot, lot of sprockets. So what it does is it's not going to go any faster than just you having the, the hub gear and the tiniest of sprocket. What it does, it gives you a lot of choices because you can go the fastest you can do, which is probably going to be on a small wheel around 120 gear inches. Not, it's not going to be much faster than that with the most hub gears, unless you have a Roloff or a Shimano 10 speed, something like that. So all of these sprockets are to cover the lower ranges. If you need to climb, if you need to drop down to a very low speed, and still be able to climb in elevation 15, 20, 25 degrees. So it's really for heavy climbing and to do that without too much effort. You don't have to stand up, you can still sit down and the largest cog is going to be able to handle it. So it's good for that and it's definitely better than the Brompton 12 speed which is very narrow. There's not much the hub gear can do because it doesn't even have the full width of this uh, rear triangle. Plus you have a derailleur system that is very limited. It's very narrow in range. You can see that the cogs are not very far apart. Unlike what you see here, which is, is giving you a lot more uh, space. Now we can cover, I would say, the lower part of the gear range by having these larger cogs on the outside or having a really nice hub, either a Roloff or a, a Shimano 10 speed, something like that. But I think an easier way to work is to work on the front. And what I have on my front is this. This is a 60 tooth chain wheel. It is mass produced in China. You can buy it for 50 bucks. That's what I, I spent. This is about 50 bucks in British pounds. It pushed my gear range on the top, on the upper end of the gear range to 148. And this is based on an actual measurement that I took on my bike. So this is what it looks like on the Brompton and it is a crazy big chain wheel. You can see how big it is. Just look at it. So it's totally out of proportion. But if you have the larger Sturmy Archer, Brompton has two st Sturmies, a narrow and a wide range one. And I have the wide range Sturmy Archer in the rear. Not No external gears, it's just the hub gear in the rear. And I have the 62 th front and that gives you a lot of upper gear range. So if you want to go really fast, especially on downhills, or in my case with electric support, I can pedal at 32 miles an hour 
using a 700 watt uh, motor setup. On downhills, I could probably pedal with 40 or 45, but I've never had the courage to actually test it. That would be an interesting test to do. Now, if you don't want something as big as that, you can do pretty well with the 56 tooth. That's just a little bit smaller. It's H&H. &H. This is a brand name manufacturer, not a no name product. It might be manufactured in China. I don't know where it's made, but it's very nicely machined and they have really good quality control. So in fact, I'm planning on downgrading or upgrading, depending upon how you look at this, onto an H&H &H because I'm going to lose a little bit of my gear range, which is fine. If I have to come down from 148, which is insanely high, to 140, then I will do so. But I do appreciate the protection on my pants of having a bit of a chain guard attached to it. The problem with these big chain rings is that they don't come with any kind of a, a chain guard. And so maybe you could install something, but I haven't seen a product that would, would install at this size. This is such a large size. This is about the largest chain wheel that you can get without hiring someone to custom build one for you. And none of them come with any kind of a chain guard. So I have, I have had problems with the the dirt getting on my trousers so if i'm not using shorts in like in the not in the summer not a very hot day and i i'm dressed in long pants and this is gonna this is gonna fit my application a whole lot better and i would recommend it there is also the chance if you don't like something as big as a 54 or 56 to chain ring to get a dual one a dual installation which is going to install onto the brompton i think it's going to install on either the the brompton or the birdie or molten pretty much any of them this is fairly standard sizing so you can install it yourself it's not very difficult it's just a bunch of screws that you have to screw in and what people do to switch you can see that there's a pretty significant gap. I mean, 33 is a very, very small front chain. That means the jump between the two chain rings is really s significant. And you will have to adjust the chain length as well. But if you have a decent derailleur, it should be able to take this much. It's just that when you fold the bike, you have to move the chain over to the larger, the exterior part, not not the small chain ring, but the big chain ring. Some people have complained that this is too much work. I don't think it is too much work. I don't think this is uh, much of a big deal uh, at all. Also, there are many people who don't even install a front shifter, but carry a piece of metal, like a metal hook or a screw or something, and they manually shift over onto the small chain wheel when they need to climb. And if you don't need to climb a lot, then this system could work for you. If not, then you can just install yet another wire to have a, f a front shifter. I think overall, these, these chain wheels are not much more than 100 bucks. And cer certainly this one, if you just want the single piece, is gonna be probably $100 or so. Some of them go up to $150. It's a very cheap and very effective way to add gear ranges or to develop a very flexible system with a dual chain ring. Unlike having to install a roll-off on something like a Brompton, which is gonna be really hard because this requires the replacement of the rear triangle if you have anything other than the G-line. And that's a lot of money and it's a lot of work as well. So working on the front, in my opinion, it simply makes more sense. Now, if you want to go really insane and if you want to pedal at 50 miles an hour, especially if you have a hub in the rear, a lot of people use this without a hub. That's going to give you maybe 30, 35 miles an hour. If you put in even the wide range Termi Archer hub, you could expect to be able to pedal up to 50 miles an hour, which is really insane. These chain rings are custom made. You have to hire a shop to do it. They cost a few hundred dollars to, to make them. As you can see, to reduce the weight, they drill all these holes in it. And don't even dream about a chain guard in this size, unless they custom make one. I've never seen one in this insane size. And also, this is really close to your pants. So these are extreme solutions that, in a way, look 
really attention getting they look like a, a big piece of jewelry on your bicycle but they are really not a practical solution you can certainly achieve insane speeds with them especially if you have a hub gear in the rear but uh, very few people would install something like this something also very few people would install and not a cheap upgrade either this is over a thousand dollars is something that goes on to the crank itself in fact you have to replace the bottom bracket the whole the whole thing you are replacing and what it does it's pretty much like having a roll-off but in the front inside the crank they have been, these systems have this is the swiss uh, schlump drive but there are others as well these are really really wide they offer you a wide gear range you don't have to get a rear triangle so in some ways for some people if you don't want to get a new triangle on a Brompton this could be the answer it's a little bit cheaper it also costs less than a roll-off and all, all of that but the installation is not easy now here is what it looks like it's on a titanium installation it is remarkably slick it is very slick it is tiny it's not very lightweight because you are putting a lot of technology in there there are cogs inside the system so yeah this is a titanium Brompton or Brompton clone very hot very good looking and this is the same thing installed on a Molton as you can see it's really small it makes it very easy to fold or compact the bike it's very easy for handling the bike so it's easier in many ways than installing a, a big chain ring especially a dual chain ring you don't need any shifter in the front there is a shifting that you can do but the shifting is going on inside and of course that means that you do have shifting in the front it's just not you don't have this external caliper thing that grabs onto the chain and for the rear you can install whatever you want I mean if you put in a, a roll off in the rear and a schlumpf in the front then I don't know how fast you can pedal maybe 60 or 70 miles an hour you can pass the car on the freeway if you have the energy to do it but that would take a substantial amount of electric support to even contemplate speeds like that so those are just fantastic uh, speeds here is the installation and that's the big part a big uh, if with the Schlumpf drive you have to buy a bunch of tools and you have to remachine the the point where the bottom bracket goes in and it is a hand machine a hand miller that does this so i guess it's not if you if you are slow and cautious you're not going to make a mistake because <clears throat> you do it step by step millimeter by millimeter millimeter by millimeter and slowly and surely you mill away at the edge and you have to be damn precise doing this and once you have done it and you milled it down then you can install your schlump drive and if you screwed it up if you if you mill down too far then you need to get a new frame there's not much you can do maybe you can reinstall the original bottom bracket maybe you can do that so i just don't think you want to screw up with this installation so the installation is really really dicey this is not this is not beginner stuff this is serious bike mechanics so I would say the Schlump drive is for people who really know what they are doing or who have an expert mechanic to do the installation. I would say there's a lot you can do just by m manipulating the front. Even on the steel Brompton frame, you can get a wide range Sturmey ar Archer that fits right in there. So you don't need to get anything extra, you don't need to replace the triangle. And you have your dual chain ring in the front, that's going to do everything. Uh, 54 tooth for high speeds is plenty I, sh I would say you should be able to get 135 gear inches or so not much less which is insanely fast as it is and for climbing I would say 33 is, is plenty it's, it's very it's going to be very easy uh, and comfortable and also you don't need to spend a lot of money it's easy installation you can do it yourself and uh, sh about shifting between the two chain rings is not that difficult even if you do it manually it all depends upon how you ride and where you ride so this is my opinion on the gears that on the gearing options i should say that you have for small wheel bicycles where gearing is so important I'll be back.